Both the English and Vietnamese official Rise of Kingdoms YouTube channels released videos just now showcasing the upcoming patch and the commanders. And with the help of a Vietnamese translator, thank you, Green Tree, and also Google Lens, we can put it all together to figure out the most important things that you need to know about the upcoming patch, including the skills on the new commanders. So stick around in this video, baby, for everything we figured out, including the civilization bonuses. Let's go. Hello, my friends, and welcome back. I'm Chiskool Gaming, and I'm gonna have to do a more detailed video later once I see these commanders in game and I start to work with them because some of the translations here are a little rough. For example, Emotep, we're gonna start with the Epic Commander, is an archer, don't stay, and cough tree. Okay, joking aside, that is the garrison tree and the support tree. We know that from the icons here, but a lot of this actually translates really well, and so we're gonna work with that. And thank you again to Green Tree for helping uh, sort of buffer the confusing pieces here to try to sort this out so up to five targets in a circle aoe get hit with a debuff much like alexander the great on his expertise skill increasing their damage taken by 30 percent that's a nasty debuff all damage taken by 30 percent up to five targets three seconds when emotep is the second in command the targets also suffer 50 rage per second for three seconds now i talked to green tree and we couldn't exactly sort out if this was actually hitting every target with a rage reduction or just the primary i have a suspicion it would be just the primary otherwise this is way too overpowered in terms of uh, active skill strength i mean if you actually reduce the rage of five targets by 50 per second for three seconds this commander is so sick but just just the skill debuffing by 30 percent all damage taken, and one target losing 50 rage per second for three seconds would be really, really good. That's the expertise skill and active skill together. So the expertise enhances this, making it as strong as you see here. Continuing to the next skill, 30% of stats, baby. 15% attack, 15% defense. Seems pretty freaking good. The next skill, actually this is the fourth skill. Uh, when this commander's army is attacked, there's a 10% chance to inflict onto the target. A debuff for three seconds, reducing their skill damage dealt by 15 percent i know this part of the translation says reduces damage dealt but this part says skill damage reduction so i'm inclined to believe that's the money maker right there it's skill damage reduction so when somebody's hitting you you reduce their skill damage okay i mean okay it's not insane right it's like it's not insane if this had no internal cooldown it actually would be like really 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 good but we're not quite there. And the next skill is actually a garrison-based skill from the Don't Stay tree here, uh, making it so that you get a 7% health bonus. I mean, I got to roll with the uh, translation hilariousness here. And again, this is all like, can you, I, I never would have imagined as a kid that I'd be able to just like take a picture and like, boom, the whole thing's translated for me. But whatever. Here we are. The stairway to heaven is bigger than the army enhanced. Um, so uh, this is enhancing the active skill. I also really love this translation. Like, how do we get to this piece right here? Canoe blowing and don't love to return to the lake with. Okay, so we're enhancing the active skill. The base level of the active skill here is only a 20% damage taken reduction. Honestly, without the expertise, this commander just feels kind of okay at best. Um, but the expertise is kind of nuts. So again, what does this commander do overall? We're talking about 30% damage taken, five targets, 30% of Archer stats reduces the skill damage of things that are hitting you and increases the health of your garrison. If you are in a garrison situation and you're getting swarmed for your city, that could be pretty cool. And I will point out, this is probably only for your city. Let's go get a look again, okay? Yes, it is garrison of your city only. So don't try to get the benefit of this Epic Commander in a flag or something. That's not exactly how that works. In fact, it doesn't work that way, okay? If it's reducing the rage of all five targets, which feels insane to me, this would be a candidate for inclusion in like endgame murder balls. Like it's actually, maybe that's an exaggeration, but it feels a little nuts. So I think, I mean, this is like a Joan of Arc in reverse, right? Instead of buffing your own marches, you're debuffing the enemy. I think that this commander could be great in Canyon. I think they're good if you're protecting your city from a swarm. Probably what you would use is Sun Tzu and Emotep, maybe. I mean, Kusunoki's already a pretty great way to protect your city. But making everything hit you take 30% more damage, including the counterattack damage, is not bad. Um, I'm going to have to put some more thought into where exactly you use this commander. Obviously, he is designed to be the secondary commander. So let's go talk now about the legendary, who might be a primary. Two of these skills we have in English. 
which is awesome. Uh, 1,000 damage factor up to three targets. I do like AoE in a forward-facing fan-shaped area. Damage dealt to each target is reduced by 15% for each additional target. And they also suffer a 30% reduced healing for five seconds. This feels really weak to me. This feels really weak. But let's look at his other skills to see if they balance them out. I mean, like 1,000 damage factors, like El Cid levels of damage factor. And I get that it is AoE, but it gets weaker. Like Sun Tzu does more damage, bro. I'm just, I'm not hyped about this active skill, but I am hyped about the next skill. I'm actually insanely hyped about this skill. This skill feels overtuned, like too strong. Let me talk about that for a second. So we're looking at 15% attack, 10% march speed for archers. Archers desperately need the march speed to get away or deal with cavalry. Very much needed. But 15% bonus damage when you're off territory. Dang, that's good. That's good. I, I, I can, can only begin to tell you how strong all damage boost is. And off territory is a pretty slim requirement to get that upside. But now the remaining three skills, we actually don't have in English. Let's go look at the translated versions. Archers get 10% defense in the third skill um, when you are on the map. And you have a 10% chance to, I think, debuff the target, increasing their skill damage taken by 15% uh, for three seconds. And this can activate once every eight seconds. So we have a 10% archer defense and an instant proc to make the target take more skill damage. I mean, this is... Really good. This is kind of like the early stages of, um, you know, getting a commander like Tamaris. Like, in the very beginning of the game, you just don't have that many ways to debuff the target to make them take more skill damage. So, this feels like this could be pretty good. Uh, we got to look at the rest of the kit before we make any conclusions, though. So, let's go to the next one. Also, funny that the translator could figure out now that it's a versatility and support tree on this commander, whereas the other one was don't stay. Okay, whatever. So, troops up by this commander take 10% less counterattack damage. All right. I mean, that's good for things that are, you know, you're hitting and they're not hitting you back. Uh, but when you are hit, there's a 10% chance to deal mm, skill damage to the target. Damage factor 700. Triggers once every eight seconds. So this skill is doing a mix of things. It's making it so that it's good when you are hitting things that are not hitting you back. That's the counterattack damage taken reduction. And it's making it good so that uh, when you are getting hit, you do skill damage back potentially. I feel like I prefer commanders that sort of focus in one direction or the other and not both. So you kind of go all in on something crazy. So he's got a kind of balanced kit in that regard for... Reducing the damage he's taking and also dishing out some damage. But the expertise skill, after casting an active skill, the minion deals 30% more normal attack damage for three seconds. Okay, so you deal 30% more normal attack damage. This activates every eight seconds. So at most, every eight seconds, you can boost your normal attack damage when you use an active skill by 30%. So how does that work? I envision this as you cast an active skill uh, from your primary commander for the next three seconds, so turn two, three, and four, you would have uh, the bonus normal attack damage, which includes counterattack, right? That's, uh, that's solid. Uh, and on, I guess, turn three is when your second commander uses their active skill again. And then hopefully you get back to your skill cycle again, I guess within eight seconds, and then it fires off again. And so three of every eight seconds at best, maybe three of every nine seconds, depending on how the sequencing of these things works, you're going to have 30% more normal attack damage. I mean, that's pretty solid. So let's put this whole kit together and try to assess this for a second. A thousand damage factor is just too low. It's just too low. Thousand damage factor, three targets, reduce damage per target, reduce the healing of the target. I mean, Richard the First, look out, buddy. You got a new competitor in town with the cough tree that's going to freaking wreck you, man. Archers, versatility, and support. I honestly, fine talent trees. Support tree is really good. Okay. And then... 15% damage if you're off territory is actually, like, really, really good. I'm into that. Also, the 15% attack, 10% march speed, that's really good. 10% defense. Also, uh, the ability to make the target take additional skill damage. I mean, I think this is a commander that you still don't want to use universal legendary commander sculptures on unless you're a super whale in the early game, in which case, I mean, I think you could do some stuff with this commander, and I think it is going to be powerful and impactful in that regard. But for 99.9% .9 of players, this probably is not a commander that you're going to use universals on. And the real question is, how good is the museum buff? And is the museum buff going to be good enough to make this commander that we consider using, like Mehmed, perhaps? I think it is 
possible purely because of the skill damage taken debuff. Instant proc, 10% chance, but instant proc, make the target take more skill damage, could be really good. Will this commander compete with Gilgamesh is what I'm trying to say. And what I will point out is that this is a versatility commander. We have all skills relevant, whereas Gilgamesh does not have all skills relevant. So I don't know. I'll be kind of looking to see what we get again from that museum buff, assuming there is one kind of right away for this early game available immediately commander. And I think it could be very strong. By the way, if you're enjoying this video so far, do me a huge favor, throw a like on here and consider subscribing to the channel. It supports the channel tremendously. It really does mean a lot to me. Thank you for your support. Now, at this point, you're probably wondering, okay, bro, what are the civilization bonuses? We're looking at 5% archer attack, 5% rallied army damage, and 1.5% building and research speed. Now, that building and research speed, I think it's just there to offset how strong the other boosts are. This is a civilization you are going to use to rally stuff with archers. And really, that's it, I think. Uh, if you want to open field, you're going to use Ottoman because you get march speed boost and skill damage boost. So that's an open field civilization for sure. And if you want to rally calves, then you would use Arabia, right? If you're rallying infantry, I guess you could consider this civilization. I mean, the 5% all damage is better than anything else that you're going to choose, right? So if you're rallying infantry, you could do this. Um, so we don't yet have a rally damage for an infantry. You know, you just got Vikings, 3% counterattack. Even though you don't get the 5% stats uh, that you would get from, you know, Viking, uh, just the 5% all damage is actually so good, but only for rally leads. Now, this Archer Special Unit, actually, I can show you some close-ups of this. The Archer Special Unit looking pretty thick. Love to see it. Looking pretty good. We actually have a few more of these. We actually don't know yet what the base stats are. So I will be making a video, of course, as soon as the update goes live to review that and all the other things from this patch that we figure out, and there is a lot more to figure out, let me now show you the city themes that are on their way into the game. The Golden Eye city theme is available from Esmeralda's Prayer, and there now are some tiered unlocks for the number of spins that you do on Esmeralda's Prayer. So I don't yet know the details of exactly how possible it will be for everybody to unlock this Golden Eye theme, but I will say that, honestly, it's just fine. 5% cavalry defense at the cost of 5% archer health is really not the right end of the exchange here. I mean, it is funny that the Egyptian-looking theme, which, by the way, gives archer boosts all the way through and through. I mean, we got two new archer commanders, okay? On top of the two archer commanders, Boudicca and Henry, that are on the way into the game. And this is reducing your archer health, which is kind of funny. So... Uh, this is not a theme you would want to use if you're actually using the Egyptian commanders, and this is not a theme that I think most people need to feel like, that. oh my gosh, I have to get it. I mean, what you would really want is the boost to be health and the reduction to be attack. That's that's always the, the sort of thing you're looking for here. By the way, speaking of attack, 15% infantry attack on the Supreme Warrior. Oh, for those of you that got the legendary city theme, Babylonian Gardens... Man, your 10% attack city theme is now surpassed by a 15% attack city theme at the cost of 5% cavalry defense and archer attack. Not that bad as a downside, honestly. So I think that this city theme is very much on par. I'd say this is kind of equivalent to the 10% health infantry city theme. In the grand scheme of things, I, I would put them on par with each other. That's maybe a bit more of a nuanced question based on your equipment and, you know, the commander pairings that you're choosing. But as a rule of thumb, I think it's not unreasonable to conclude that if you had 10% health, you know, for all like maybe 1,000 governors in the world <laughs> that have that, you don't need to go for this. But also if you already have like 5% health, I mean, obviously I would say probably 15% attack is better. How much better is up for debate. So I, I, I honestly would say, unless you're a rally or a garrison lead, like this, this theme is not so critical. Unless you're an infantry focused account through and through, then this is not so critical. Um, and I don't think that most accounts should be focused on one troop type more than, you know, three or at most five marches if you're seven march murder balling. You really should, at this point, have also one cav march and one archer march. So I just don't think that this particular city theme is 
insane for everybody to go and get. Is that helpful? I think that's a good explanation. The other rewards for Zenith of Power, by the way, do remain the same. So this is the typical reward structure that we're used to. And if you're wondering, could I win Zenith of Power? How hard could it be? Carl will be up in the top for a video that explains that way in depth, gives you everything you need to know. I also snapped a picture for what it's worth of how this city theme, which does look absolutely freaking amazing. I mean, kudos on the design of that theme. It looks 10 out of 10 for an epic city theme. Looks amazing. Uh, it is coming from Esmeralda's Prayer, as I described. Everybody can get their hands, by the way, on the new uh, legendary Archer Commander just by logging in over the course of seven days, which, like, obviously, you're watching videos here. You're logging in every single day, and you're playing like a champion. You've got farm accounts. You know what you're doing, right? You know what you're doing. So you'll get this for free. Uh, but I also think that he's going to be in gold keys, so I hope that you've been saving your gold keys. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, because I have, like, I don't know, 6,000 gold keys across three or four accounts. Well, I'm just going to rip them all open, baby, and see how many sculptures I get of these new commanders. I have been saying for ages that it's worth waiting once we know a new civilization is on its way into the game until that civilization arrives in case the commander is good. So, boom, you open up those gold keys, you get a those, you know, bunch of those commander sculptures, and you're off to the freaking races, right? For those of you that are really into the daily quizzes, you'll love the new alliance quiz, by the way. <laughs> There's an alliance quiz where uh, group... Work is encouraged. In fact, here you can see you used a flash of insight to remove a wrong answer. Um, and, you know, this is actually, I think, a team-based thing. So one person from the team removed a wrong answer. The more people you have playing at the same time, probably the better for this alliance-based quiz. And there's even the words of eternity. New story stuff, okay? The new story stuff, I actually kind of enjoy. I mostly enjoy reading it. Um, and I just want to zoom in here and we see Cleopatra. So she's like obviously involved in the story. Also, they told us that Gilgamesh is involved in the story. I mean, you know, Gilgamesh is kind of a little bit jealous that there's new archer commanders and the new civilization. Unlike every other civilization that has ever been released in the game that got leadership commanders, like Gilgamesh is just kind of feeling like, bro, how can you be put in the game? You know, it's it's like a feeling a little bit less than, you know, a little diminished by virtue of these new archers, the new hotness, everybody's going to be excited about. Gilgamesh is kind of like, hey, bro, it's my job to make the target take more skill damage. It's my job to make them take more skill damage when they heal. What are you doing entering into the game dealing with healing, bro? How, how do you have any right? How do you have any right at all to mess with my unique stuff? So actually, honestly, like Gilgamesh, it's just, bro, yeah, it, your role is getting diminished. You're just going to have to accept it. And we're going to take this six-act storyline to help Gilgamesh understand why he no longer is quite as special. And like, bro, hey, this is just what happens when you get, you know, a new member of the family, okay? You just got to accept that there's more people. They all get are equally loved, except uh, maybe Charlemagne. Also, Lubu. Like, sorry, bro. You know, the other thing that was in this video that, like, honestly caught me off guard was Boudicca. And w when the previous version of this picture was available that had the skill descriptions. Like, all I did was look at the skill descriptions. I didn't look past them to look at Boudica herself. And my God, those boots are freaking huge, bro. Those boots are out of control, right? And I was looking at the skill description. Excuse me, my skill description is up here. Keep your look up. My skill description's over here, okay? So I didn't even look, you know, below the skill description to notice that she, even in those pictures, she had just freaking giant boots, man. Whatever. If you enjoy the video, and my strange attempt at comedy, uh, do a huge favor. Do me a huge favor. Throw a like on here. Consider subscribing. You're not going to want to miss these live streams coming up next week. Like, at the same time that this is getting patched in, I'm going to go fight in KVK on my main account. We're going to be seven marching. It's going to be insane. I'm mostly going to actually be six marching and garrisoning. GG, get rack nerds. I got to get 30 million kills with six marches. I can pull that off. Easy, 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 easy. If you enjoyed the video, throw a like. Subscribe. I, I don't know why my energy's out of control. And until next time, you have fun. Smashing the kingdom. See you soon. Oh, and um, leave a comment with what you think the best pairings are for these new commanders. I, I gotta really think it through a little bit. I gotta see those museum buffs. And I'm eager for your thoughts. No, it's okay. I'll wait. Leave a comment. I appreciate you. Throw a like on the video. No, yeah, I can hang out for that. I'll, I'll be right here. I'll be cracking jokes about new skills or whatever the heck that was. The don't stay tree. Don't stay. I, I, honestly, I'm gonna be using that for a while.